The trigger condition tab is what determines whether an alert event has occurred. That's the real logic of the alert. The reset condition tab, of course, determines what constitutes a resolution to that alert event. I've already set up my trigger conditions, so let's look at the reset conditions. On the reset condition tab, I have four options. You'll notice that the no reset condition option has been pre-selected. This one is pretty straightforward. If I'm alerting on a node going down, then every time the node goes down, an alert will be triggered. Now, while this is a very simple reset condition, you do have to make sure that it actually matches the alert you have built. You should be as careful about your reset condition logic as you are about your trigger condition logic. Suppose I do have an alert where my explicit trigger condition logic is alert when node status is equal to down. If my reset condition is set to reset this alert when trigger condition is met, then that alert will trigger each time the condition is met. Now, while the majority of the time you could probably get away with that, similarly, you might be alerting on things like resource utilization that have a tendency to change very quickly. If I'm alerting on CPU utilization above 90%, I'm probably not going to say, trigger this alert each time the condition is met, because the CPU utilization may dance back and forth on either side of that 90% mark, which could cause the alert to consistently trigger again in rapid succession. You don't want multiple alerts on what is really a single alert event, so if that's the type of alert I'm building, I'd probably look for a better reset option. For both cases I just mentioned, quite possibly a better option would be to create a special reset condition for this alert. With this option selected, I can create a new condition and add reset condition logic just exactly like I added my trigger condition logic. So for a node down alert, I would reset when the node status is equal to up. To make it easier to set up the reset condition logic, you can choose to copy your logic from the trigger condition tab. Now, for my CPU utilization, rather than resetting as soon as it drops below 90%, I might set a new threshold and say don't reset the alert until my utilization drops back down below maybe 75%. No reset condition and create a special reset condition are the two most commonly used reset conditions, but you've got a few more choices too. You can reset the alert automatically after a set period of time. This would be useful to alert you to the fact that an alert state still exists. For instance, by alerting on high CPU utilization or something similar, and resetting the alert after a set period of time, let's say 15 minutes, you'd get a new alert every 15 minutes as long as that CPU utilization stays high. So this reset condition can be used as an update to say the alert condition still exists and needs to be resolved.